This video was brought to you by a better planner, Ken Power, Marcus Biel, Stormberg, and Bill Componente. Yo, what's up? We're now at Ion Didal, and behind me here you see Polestar 2. This is a new version with a new drive chain, a new battery. I tried the previous one, uh, that was the railway drive, this is the overdrive and the PP. You can see it in the brake calipers. And also, well, now the badge is not that visible anymore. It used to be a black grill, now we have white grill, but at least if you see this one, Polestar engineer. Well, I also, um, now the power upgrade is, well, which is software update, is now included in the PP. So this one has the leather seat. Oh, sorry for the light conditions. Yeah, we have the leather seats. Oh, so, okay, we're gonna do a range test, but um, I think many people, they might not know what range test is, or they might not care. But uh, what I want to find out is this new drive train, especially this one, which was the overdrive, drive, is it more efficient than the old one? Because the old one, uh, light condition is a bit better. Okay. The old one was permanent overdrive, two permanent magnet motors. This one has the same uh, permanent magnet motor in the back as the railroad drive, but then an induction motor in front. And when we are cruising, it will then disengage the induction motor, just like Tesla has had for many, many years now, that design. And also uh, Mercedes has the same design. So yeah, um, the plan now is to drive. Uh, we don't need to test the battery because we already tested it. We're gonna drive all the way up there to Rutsak and back again. That would be the 120 test. And then we just do a shorter loop on the 90 test. So let me see, how do I reset here? Um, yeah, I'll just use auto here and uh, eco climate. Yeah, okay, let's use eco climate. Let's see. All right, and I have to reset this one. Yeah, trip manual, and then off we go. Today is 5th of October, winter is coming, it's getting colder. So outside now we have 11 degrees Celsius, but at least it's dry. A uh, little bit of wind, yeah, okay. So let me check something here, we have the range assistant. Range assistant, okay, I set it to projected. You can see if we switch to standard here, then it shows you 360 kilometers and projected is then 220 so this is actually more useful and then okay set the, okay we go here not wait what what yeah here so yeah which means that the, the projected range here is now visible here previously this one would be the rated range or whatever the fixed rate but this one would be the projected but the car is still a bit noisy especially the pp with the gold uh, seat belt and the bigger rims than the long range other yeah, I think it's called the wrong way, the dual motor. So uh, at least uh, they haven't done anything there in the noise reduction department. But um, it's still a nice and comfortable car. And also we have a lean stamper just like before. And um, uh, it goes from uh, the setting. You can set it to uh, one, which is the hardest, was a zero, not remember, to I think it was 20, which is the maximum. Then it becomes very soft. And this one has been set to 12. So uh, it feels nice, uh, well, it doesn't feel over hard. Uh, by default, uh, they set it to 10, so it has been softened up a little bit, which is probably, uh, yeah, I mean, Polestar in Norway, they did it to optimize it for Norwegian, shitty Norwegian roads. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like in Belgium, oh yeah. And how is Mjösen today? Oh, okay, not much wind. Check here, we have a slight headwind. And this is such a pleasure, you see. We have navigation here by Google, and then I plotted in uh, Rutshögda, and then the car tells me I've arrived at 49%. You see, this is the kind of features you won't get if you use screen mirroring. Uh, some, yeah, cause some cars doesn't even have navigation, but there is a, there are some nice advantages with you have, if you have navigation built in the car, because you can get these estimations, and also, if the car has preheating, which should be standard now in 2023, then it will also preheat the battery if you navigate to a fast charger. We are now at the route so down. This is a turnaround point. So uh, according to Google, it's supposed to be 91 kilometer from down to here. Hmm. This car reports 90, so it seems to underreport a bit. But I'll get the more accurate result once I'm back. Yeah, you want to minimize the measurement error by driving long enough distance. So uh, the other poles that I tested, but that had a different uh, tire dimension, had, uh, I think it was 1.5% under, well, I mean, it showed 1.5% too, too little yeah, values or distance. 
we just passed Muir's Torna and over here the consumption is 227 watt hour per kilometer before correction so usually the consumption we see here uh, is close to what we get once we are back so now we just have to drive another uh, 83 kilometers well, shit there okay 83 kilometers back to Dar I have not navigated to uh, Ionity I navigated to Circle K Dar so that it does wait wait okay well, whatever but, uh, but so that it doesn't um, preheat the battery and mess up the test we are almost back at Darla and let me show you our bug. It's been there for a long time. You see, distance is 177. We drove one and a half hour. That is less than 120 kilometers per hour, 119, 118. But then uh, the trip meter here claims 122. So it's been a bug for a long time that it shows you three kilometers per hour to high average speed. And you can say, well, maybe it's because of the real distance. Well, the real distance is 180 kilometers per hour at this point so uh, at least the the average speed should be 120 not 122 as claimed in here so yeah hopefully one day they'll fix this bug okay the result from 120 test 200 oh, shit. 224 watt hour per kilometer hmm, okay and then distance so this car underreported distance by 0.8 percent it's supposed to be 182 kilometers so uh, yeah, let's do the nine test and see. It was uh, 11 degrees Celsius average, by the way. It's 12 over here. And then it was uh, 10, 11 during the trip. It's two in the afternoon now, a little bit of traffic, but fortunately we are doing the 90 test now. So uh, it's not affecting us much at all. Yeah, uh, range assistant, by the way. Um, well, I don't really need it that much anymore since we have uh, the projected range here anyway. So, and then also the eco climate here uh, that I used to go to range assistant is now available here, the same one there. So, uh, and also I was looking for some, some driving stats info. We had the performance tab here. This one is for, uh, well, it's a bit weird now. It, it counts average speed since we started driving. Uh, and we have, the, we have a G meter here. So this one is also available in the other uh, pole stop, but only the performance pack has this this one here so I will try to use this one when I uh, do the launch test because this car has the same horsepower or the same power output 350 kilowatt but torque has been bumped up to 740 newton meter so since it has the same po power it should mean that uh, it has a flatter power curve then what well, we done with the test 170 watt hour kilometer what the heck uh, you know, in theory, if the motor decoupling thing is working well, then this one should have more or less the same consumption as the rear wheel drive. Except for that, okay, it's a little bit colder today. Uh, okay. Let me check something here. What, what the heck? Freaking reflection. Oh. Yeah, we have glass roof here where we cannot uh, take down the... Uh, I mean, we cannot cover the glass, but okay, let me see. If I try to navigate to uh, Ionity nearby here, what's going to happen then? This one, the super fast one. Uh, I'm not sure if it's, we are too close or... If I do this. Okay, let's see. I'll check something here. If I then go to range assistant. Well, it says instant consumption zero kilowatt. So it doesn't seem like it's preheating the battery. Uh, okay, but um, I'll try something else here. I want to go to supercharger. I want to test something over there. So I'll go here. Can I find the supercharger though? If I, oh, it's, oh, test a supercharger. Click, click, no. Um, I thought you could click on it to navigate there. Okay, maybe I have to... No, no, no! Oh, shit! Yeah, shit, man. Okay, let's go again. Um, I thought you could click here. There! Oh, oh, uh, oh, uh, okay. If you're navigated somewhere, you cannot click there. But now you can click there, okay. Very fast, all right? Start. Okay, so I set the car in drive. 
Uh, so either the battery is hot enough or uh, let's see. No, zero kilowatt. Okay, let's go over there. I want to test charging over there. We are now at Nebenes, and you see here, we are just uh, a couple of hundred meters away. And this time, if we look at the range resistance, we're pulling six kilowatt with climate off. So this is uh, quite clear that uh, the battery heater is running. But it sounds like heat pump is actually running. Huh, interesting. So they're not using PDC. Sounds like they're using the heat pump to heat up the battery. Wow, what kind of alien technology is that? Okay, um, let's just plug it in. Wait, huh? Look at this. 147 kilowatt. 146 kilowatt. Huh? Wait, did they fix this bug? Or does it only apply to Chinese cars? <laughs> um, okay. This is strange. It reports the same there as there. Huh. Uh, okay, uh, either they fix the bug or it only applies to the Chinese car. I think I need to maybe get some Chinese car or, well, ideally I need to get the Maxus again, but, um, hmm, hmm, interesting. <laughs> right, I need to try this. Reset. <laughs> Wait, this must be based on speed or speed. Uh, four point. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, we need more optimal battery condition. So if you compare this result versus the one many years ago, that was even non-PP, just a long, long range dual motor. Uh, the consumption today was actually better, despite that that one had a uh, higher temperature. So this could indicate that the new drivetrain is more efficient, uh, but then uh, for some reason versus the rear wheel drive, then the rear wheel drive is, okay, it's more efficient, but, um, but it also had higher temperature. But at least when it comes to the high speed test, it could seem like it's very similar. So uh, if the decoupling works and then we don't waste energy on running you know, front uh, rear all the time, then the rear wheel drive and the front wheel drive should, uh, sorry, sorry, rear wheel drive versus all wheel drive should have very similar consumption numbers, just like in a Tesla, for example. Model 3 rear wheel drive versus Model 3 all-wheel drive, there's almost no difference. But then when I tried previously with Polestar and then also some other cars, I think it was, uh, yeah, I don't remember, but uh, there would be a big difference between all-wheel drive and rear wheel drive. So, okay, I don't know exactly how it is unless I have the old Polestar uh, with the exact same tires and then run it uh, on very similar driving condition or run it simultaneously Then we'll probably see a clear difference, but at least based on this test It seems like we do have better efficiency numbers now than before which is the improvement in the drive trim And when it comes to the car shape and the aerodynamics that one has not been changed So yeah, I think that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always Thank you for watching and talk to you later